466 million hours. That's the amount of time spent every single day, predominantly by women and children, walking to find water or a safe place to relieve themselves. It's something the Oscar-winning actor Matt Damon decided years ago to try and help change when he co-founded Water.org. He joined me along with Water.org CEO Gary White and longtime corporate partner AB InBev CEO Michelle Ducaris in an exclusive interview. Matt used to travel to far-flung places with his mother as a child, and I began by asking what he would have said if back then someone would have told him by 2021 he would have helped 38 million people access safe water. Here's what he said. I, I say, I hope you're telling me the truth. I hope <laughs> um, and then And then I'd probably say, is that it, you know? Because there, uh, there's a lot more to do, obviously. But, um, but things have gone as well for us at Water.org as we could have hoped. We're, this is what we dreamed about when we partnered um, back in 2009 and what we talked about. And um, so that, that part's really exciting. And, and sharing the story with, uh, with people about, about, as you say, it's about you know, the, the poorest people in the world, uh, predominantly women, really, really taking control of their own lives. And, and all we do is, 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 is kind of nudge the market toward them and allow them to, um, to do the rest and, and solve their own problems. And so that's a really wonderful story to tell because it's about these heroic uh, women kind of one by one doing this over and over and repaying these loans at over 99%. I mean, this is part of it, Gary. It's um, Water.org is a story of self-determination. It's about tackling gender inequality, as, as Matt said. 90% or predominantly women here are, are borrowing money. They're helping themselves get access to clean water and it's a huge problem. I'm not sure people that are watching this understand the scale of the issue that we're talking about here. Yeah, it, it is huge scale. I mean, uh, more than 700 million people lack access to, to safe water and uh, more than double that don't have access to improved sanitation. Uh, but what that means is when you think about you know, every day, every day when, when we wake up, we get water somewhere, right? And we go and turn the tap. But everybody in the world, when they woke up today, had to get water somewhere. And women spent 200 million hours today uh, just walking to get water, spending time waiting in line for water. So you can imagine what that can do to, to their families and to their productivity. And so what we really uh, help do by getting access to these small affordable loans so that people can get a water connection in their home is help them buy their time back. And I think that's what's really uh, key with the whole relationship uh, with Stella Artois uh, in doing what we're doing this fall. We'll come to this. I think we in the West, and you've said it, we get up in the morning, we get a drink of water, and it's, we don't consider it a luxury. It's something normal to us. It's a basic human right, quite right. frankly. Um, and you mentioned a statistic there that I want to repeat. In total, actually, it's 466 million hours a day that are spent predominantly by women walking to go and find water, trying to find a safe place to relieve themselves. Yeah. And actually, if you can provide them with the ability to get access to water safely for themselves, you free up a mind-blowing amount of time. That's exactly right. And, and it's women and girls as well. So, so the effect on girls is that it goes from, from their, their life is revolving around trying to get water to suddenly the water's available so they're back there in school. And so, if, and obviously the outcome is a lot different for their life if they're educated and they suddenly have the chance to dream and they can dream about, you know, a, you know, a life ahead of them the way we all get to do growing up uh, because this, this, this need has been met. And so, I mean, the benefits to the communities too if that's you can exactly educate right. women and you can pull this together. Um, I watched a, uh, an interview that you did though with a small child and actually what you asked her, and I'll vividly remember it, I think, for the rest of my life. He said, what are you going to do with the time? And she said, I'm just going to play. That, that was really, it was a, she was 13 and my oldest was 13 at the time. And so we, we were in Haiti. This is 10, 10 or so years ago. And, uh, and I asked her what she was going to do. And it was just, you know, she, I, I said, oh, you're going to have more time for homework now, you know, kind of joking <laughs> with her. And she, but she looked at me and she had that, she had such great kind of attitude. She goes, I don't need more time for homework. I'm, I'm the smartest kid in my class. <laughs> And she said it in that way where you're like, oh, you are the smartest kid in your class. And I was like, all right, well, hot shot, what are you going to do uh, with all this extra time? And she looked at me totally earnestly and she said, I'm going to play. And I mean, it buckled me, not in front of her, but, I, you know, that's what every kid should be thinking about.
You walk away and cry after that moment, but you're also doing good, which is great. And Michelle, come in because you're part of this. And actually, we've sort of said it, it's the gift of giving time, and that's at the core of your latest ad campaign. And I know this has been a years long partnership already, but explain what this holiday promo yeah, means. A, a great partnership for us is the right thing to do first. Right. We believe that's the right thing to do. For us, our business is very local. It's all about the communities where we operate in, where we source our products, and where our consumers are. And when we saw water.org, how good this was, we thought that Stella could come and help. So for seven years now, we partner. It's always a very special part of our year and our planning to come together and think about how can we get this better. We've been in these seven years helping more than three million people now. And this year we have this Give the Gift of Time campaign. That's a special holidays campaign where you can buy Stella Artois or buy a Stella Artois chalice and help us in supporting water.org. And it's not the only thing you're going to do as well. I believe there's going to be um, water tanks in New York City with the QR code and you can, modern technology, you can use the QR code to get more access to. Yeah, we thought that would be very important to raise the awareness and to bring people closer to the reality that we are talking about here. So we will have across New York this huge opportunity for people to visit this water tank where they will see a woman carrying the water. They will be able to see the difference between having water available for you here, as we all have, and what the women around the world need to do to get water for their families. You know, it's also important from a business perspective. I don't think we should be separating care for the planet in whatever form it is from, from profits. You know, my, my mother says to my father, you need to drink more water, and he says it's the best excuse he gets on a daily basis to, um, to drink beer, quite frankly, and the girls and the family will roll their eyes. But he has a great point because without water, you don't have a business. So there's business in this, there's also giving back, and those two things should be intrinsically entwined. Yeah, that's perfect. We always say that no water, no beer is one of the four <laughs> ingredients that you have in beer. Beer is very natural. So no barley, no beer. So we need the water to grow the barley. And no water, no hops, no beer. So we really need to call the attention for how important it is to protect water and the water sources that we have why we need to support people in the local communities. This is very close to who we are and is what we want to do. Matt, business intrinsic to the relationship that you're building, to the money that you're raising, to the communities that you're accessing and you're building. Well, you can see why we love them as partners and, uh, <laughs> and why it's been, it's been so great for all of us for all these years. And they're, they've really accelerated the work that we're doing. Um, and, 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 and with these different kind of, I mean, this year with this water tank installation, it's, it's so cool. It's like all these ways that they're, they're helping us spread this word. Um, again, because it's a story we, we really need to get out there because we believe in people. The more people hear this, the more that they want to become involved with it and, and help. It, people love stories that, uh, about positive change, about real impact. Um, and so that's what we're trying to, to, to make sure people understand that. And this, this holiday commercial this year, it, this idea that they came up with, which was so great for us, it's, 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 you know, give the gift of time, right? It's the best thing. It's what we're all thinking about in the holidays, certainly coming out of COVID where we all reassessed our, you know, it's it, this time with our families, time with our loved ones. Some, some of us were split up from our loved ones and grandparents were split up from grandchildren. And so this idea that, you know, giving, giving that gift of time together uh, is the most beautiful thing you can give somebody, and it's as easy as as uh, as, as giving some Stella to somebody, right? <laughs> or, or one of these beautiful chalices, right? So, right. So, um, or or your dad, you know, exactly. or your dad it's getting his your dad, your dad drinking his water, you know, your dad just dad water. water. <laughs> Welcome back to First Move, and the COP26 climate summit is now well underway over in Glasgow. Moments ago, we heard from noted naturalist Sir David Attenborough who laid out what is at stake, saying, quote, we are already in trouble. Even punchier, the UN Secretary General warned humanity is, quote, digging its own grave. Coming up very soon, US President Joe Biden is expected to speak, and we will bring you that live the moment it begins. There's live pictures of him there, as you can see on your screen.
Now, as the calls for action there grow louder, I asked Water.org CEO Gary White to explain why we cannot separate the water crisis they're trying to tackle from the broader efforts to address climate change. Even if someone has access to water right now in one of these, you know, urban slums or poor rural areas, it can be very tenuous, right, in terms of like what's happening with the weather there and what their water source is. So with climate, it is going to impact those who are the most vulnerable first. It's going to make it harder for those who don't have water to get access to water, and those who do will maybe backslide. And that's why, you know, I'll, I, I'll be at COP and we'll be carrying the message of water. Uh, we'll be partnering on a session with uh, Stella Artois there to, to highlight water and why climate is water. It's, as we see, you know, in California, it's too little water. You know, in other places, it's floods and, and tsunamis. And that's the, the thing. We have to look at this as a water crisis and a climate crisis woven together. And we have to look at it from the perspective of the poorest among us and make sure that we're not just trying to, to you know, capture more carbon, but we're also looking at resilience and adaptation. And when we often use the phrase climate change, I'm not sure we actually understand the impact of the change. We're talking a lot about the mitigation efforts, but the change that we're seeing in our planet and our environment is crucial. And even just the statistics today, one in nine people lack access to safe water. 55% of people don't have access to safe sanitation. 55% of the world. Um, and that's only going to get worse. Well, that's the thing. You know, we're very happy with this the over 3 million people we've reached through this partnership with the 38 million people that we've reached. But we don't want to see that go backwards, yeah. right? We want to we want to build on that, and uh, and that's what um, you know. We know that the poorest of the poor will feel the effects of this first and worst. That we we know that will happen. So, so we we, we have to uh, you know work together to mitigate that. You know what's fascinating to me as well uh, for all the discussion, particularly that we're having here in the United States on infrastructure spending, and understand when you look. And the data is relatively limited, but it's less than 2% of all the money that is invested goes to water-related infrastructure. Why is that? Is it because we, we in the West, where we're investing the money, we don't see the problem because, as we've discussed, you have access to it? It's, it's not about a lack of care. It's understanding. It um, you know, we were talking earlier, you know, 8 trillion gallons of water a year are lost because of, you know, leaky pipes or, you know, through infrastructure. Think about the, the cost, the carbon cost of delivering that water, right? You know, you know, getting it, treating it, moving it, and then suddenly you just lose it, right? Is that, that's a, an absolute waste. Give and me that stat again. How eight trillion eight gallons trillion. of water, right? So that you could solve the problem, the problem twice the problem. over with just with, with um, shoring, that, shoring that up, which is a big thing to do, but, 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 that, but, but you, that you need to be thinking that way in terms of kind of attacking this problem. So. I don't hear this being discussed enough. That, that's why we want to bring it to the fore, you know, uh, when we're in Glasgow, because it is, that, that 8 trillion represents 25% of all the water that is sourced and treated. And so it's one thing to have a carbon footprint when you derive some economic value out of it. You know, you, you drive to work in your car and you make money and you provide for your family. But when you have an, a carbon footprint that's completely has no economic value that leaks out unaccounted for, that's kind of some of the low-hanging fruit I think that we can we can be looking at and boost that infrastructure investment from 2% of infrastructure up higher because this has been overlooked for dec decades if not centuries. And I think and going back to your original point, I think it is that, that we just, it's so hard for us to relate to it, mm -hmm. right? Because we've never, none of us in the West have ever been thirsty. We don't know anybody who has. We're all always within 20 feet of a, of a clean drink of water, you know, in your kitchen sink, in your bathroom. The water in your toilet is cleaner than most people have access to, the people that we're talking about. So, so it's trying to get people over that hurdle and trying to carry that message. Water is a source of life. It's also what you're talking about there is a source of sustainable growth, sustainable growth. And we talk about that a lot. Now you're really getting to project-based ways of tackling this. What more do you need? guys, what, how can we help if businesses are watching this conversation, if consumers are watching this conversation, people are going to buy Stella Artois glasses. Yeah, drink so, more beer, yeah, right? no. <laughs> well, that's already the heart of the conversation. Give the gift of time. Give the gift of time. We shall. What more? What more can we do? Well, I think, you know, the example that, that you've set, Michelle, with uh, 
really leaning into this at, at every level, right? And if more corporations were able to do that, you know, their leading voice on the, the Water Resilience Coalition that we've we've helped put together, uh, focusing on sustainability, focusing on those those individuals, seeing their their needs, and I think. If, if every corporation was doing what Stella yeah. was doing, I think we could have the problem solved. Yeah. And I think that's a key message for you know public and private partnerships to, to come together with organizations like ours. Because these are huge problems. I mean, it's, this is going to take more than a trillion dollars to solve the water and sanitation crisis. And it really is an all hands on deck. It's ex businesses, it's organizations like water.org, it's government, it's you know financial institutions all coming together to, to do this. This is like, it's, it should be an embarrassment for us as a planet, as a people, that you know so many of us still don't even and have access to this first commodity, and that's water. And to your point, a trillion dollars is a drop in the ocean for all the money and the wealth creation that we've seen even Absolutely. over the last decade, let's be clear. There is the money there for this. You know when you ask people for money and you ask them for the support, at the core of that needs to be trust, that they know that the money that they're giving is going to the right places, that the women that borrow this money are utilizing it are allowed to utilize it in the way that they should and that these projects get finished. How do you promise and ensure people that are watching this that what is required gets done? I, I think what makes this really deliver and what the promise is, is the promise of the women that we're trying to help, right? They are the ones who uh, want to improve their lives. They see the value of water, and that's why you know they they know that there's not going to be enough charity in the world to help everyone. So they step up and they say, "I know I want this water connection, or I want this water storage tank, and I want it so badly. I'm going to take out this loan to go do that." So this is like a, a demand-driven approach, yeah. and so we know, we verify, we can see those loans and go to the field and verify them that those improvements actually took place. We can verify that the loans are actually repaid so that that money is available for the next woman to get access to the loan. And to me, that's what's most powerful. This isn't a charity you know, solution like we come and drill your well and walk away and say, good luck. It's like, what do you want? And how do we empower you to have you know, your own agency to get the water solution that you need? And that is what we see you know, now uh, more than uh, you know, almost 40 million times over. So so self-determination, as you said earlier. But the, the other piece, to just add on to that, because um, that really is at the heart of what we do and believe, um, as you do that and as these loans keep getting paid back they, they, and recirculate, you're driving down the cost, the philanthropic cost per person reached. So in the traditional well system that costs, say, $25 to get somebody clean water for life, you're getting somebody safe water for life for you know under five under and 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 dropping. It just keeps dropping as these loans keep going out. So, so it's all it's not only a a, a, a virtuous thing you're doing. It's it's a, it's the smart way to do it. Yeah, there's nothing charitable about this. No, and therein lies the key. Yeah. In seeing the the results of this work, to me, what strikes the most is the idea that we have the choice to help. They have no choice. And once we give the choice for them to have the water, they will pay back. They are proud of paying back because they are helping others. So we have the choice to help. The ultimate empowerment. Guys, thank you. And you can be part of helping solve the global water crisis. Visit water.org forward slash donate. I'm showing you the page there.